Okay, so now I'm doing question four of November 2023 question paper mathematics paper one, and these are exponential functions. So question four read as follows: Sketched below is a graph of f of x is equal to two raised x minus four on the interval from x uh, x equal to two, then before x equal to four. A and B are respectively, are respectively the y and x intercept of F. So A and B are the y intercept and x intercept of F. So let's go to 4.1. So if you look at this graph, it's defined from x called from x called to minus 4 and it's to 4, but 4 is not included. Maybe before 4. That's what we can say. This is an open interval or half closed interval. So, 4.1, write down the equation of the asymptote of f. f have one asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, right? And that asymptote is y is equal to 4. y is equal to minus 4. Sorry. y is equal to minus 4 is your asymptote. So we have minus 4 here. Done. 4.2, determine the coordinates of b. What is b? b is the x-intercept, right? And y is what there? It's 0. So we want the coordinates of b. f of x is equal to 2 raised x minus 4. We know y is 0 there. So this part is 0. is equal to 2 raised x minus 4. So 4 is equal to 2 raised x. 2 raised 2 is equal to 2 raised x. And x is equal to 2. This is the value of x. So the coordinates of b is 2, or x is 2, and y is 0. These are the coordinates of b. We're done with this one. Go to 4.3. What are they saying? 4.3. They are saying, determine the equation of k, a straight line passing through a b, in the form kx is equal to. So there's a straight line passing through A and B. You can say that straight line is there, something like this. It doesn't look very nice. So it's passing through here and there. You can have something like this here. This, this is can work. So it's passing through this point and that point. So what do you have? You need the gradient first between 2 and 0 and coordinates of A. Coordinates of A is 0 and minus 4. It's the x intercept, right? You know, x is 0 and y is equal to actually minus 3. It's minus 3. So we find the gradient m between a, b is equal to what? It's equal to 0 minus minus 3 over 2 minus 0. It's 3 over 2. This is your gradient. So you need the line. Kx is equal to mx plus c. The k. x is equal to mx to 3 over 2x plus c. What is k? The k is equal to minus 3. It's that coordinate. So your kx is equal to my kx, the equation for kx is equal to minus 3. It's 3 over 2. You have to, of course, x minus 3. So 1 would just say kx is equal to what? Uh, 3x minus 6 over 2. That's what kx is. Done. We we'll move on. Go to 4.4. What are they saying? They are saying, calculate the vertical distance between k and f at x equal to 1. At x equal to 1, you want the vertical distance between the two. At x equal to 1, you want the vertical distance. Question is, you need to find the y value of k and the y value of f. And then find the difference between them. You want the vertical distance, find the y value of this point at 
I call what and you know it's called I call what? That's why the difference. So k at one should be called to three with one minus six over two. What is uh, what is the value of k? So it's minus three over two. That is the value of k at one. What is f at one? F at one is two raised one minus four, right? Um, which is equal to minus two. So if you want the distance between them, it's the higher y value minus the lower y value. So it should be k at one minus f at one, which is equal to minus 1.5 minus minus two. So it looks like it's something like a, like a half. It's a half. So we move on. 4.5. So, what are they saying at 4.5? Write down the equation of g if it is given by g of x equal to f of x plus 4. So they want to write the equation of g. So g of x given by f of x plus 4. Right, so your g will be f of x. What is f of x? Is two raised x minus four plus four, which is g of x is equal to two raised x. That's what your g of x is. Right. Write down the domain of the inverse. So they want you to write down the domain of the inverse. They want you to find domain of the inverse. So what you need to understand, right, is that you want the domain of the inverse. So if you want the domain of the inverse, first understand the range of G. It will be similar to the domain of the inverse. Right? Okay, so since your g is obtained by shifting your f vertically upwards for units, we will assume that we will assume that uh, your g is defined on the same on the same domain as your f. Let's take it like that. That we are still preserving the same domain, right? So what that means is the domain that right, this thing is defined on this x an element of 2 of minus 2 actually minus 2 to 4 so the corresponding range in y is an element of what? Uh, could be what? double check 2 raised minus 2 could be 1 over 4 and the highest possible x value was that. So not getting to 16. Alright. So this is the possible domain of this is a possible range of G. Right? This one here. So you know that if you want now the range, the, if you want now the domain of the inverse. That's what you want. You want the domain of the inverse. It will preserve the same structure as your range of the in, of, of the ori of the original G. So your domain will be y will be x an element of what? 1 over 4 to what? To 16. But 16 is not a big value. That's what your domain should look like. This is the domain of the inverse g prime. Here's the domain of g prime. This one here. So you know that your g will have that range on the interval from x element of minus 2 to 1 over 4, right? Therefore, the possible range is this one. 
So this possible range of G will be the domain will preserve, it will flip around when you are swapping them to, as you will see in the next question. So, now I do 4.7. Write down the equation of the inverse of G in the form y is equal to. We want the equation of the inverse of G. So we know G of x is equal to 2 raised x. If you want the inverse, you, use the, you reflect about the line y is equal to x. So x and y swap around and become y and x. So you have a situation where y is equal to 2 raised x, as you can see there. Then these swap around, you have x is equal to 2 raised y. Then take the log of x is equal to the log of 2 raised y. Then this guy comes to the front. So you have log x is equal to x y log 2, right? So, divide by log 2, both sides, divide by log 2. So, you have log x over log 2 is equal to what? To y. Therefore, the y, this can be written as log 2 base x. So, this is your inverse. So, I think we're done with this question. Question four. Then I'll go to question five. I hope it is clear to you as it is to me.